Hi, welcome to the Reptile Channel. We show videos on the care and feeding of reptiles. Reptiles are awesome creatures who play an important role in the planet's ecosystem. At Reptile Channel, we enjoy educating people and sharing our love of these amazing animals. In the feeding videos, we'll discuss the science behind them, how they hunt, and how they eat. Aw, poor squirrel. Melody's giving the squirrel mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. It's like Shark Week, but with actual science. In scientific parlance, squeeze the bejeebus out of them. We have a deep respect for these misunderstood and often scary creatures. Lizard with a frickin' laser! And the Reptile Channel strives to show people that reptiles are not to be feared, but to show you how remarkable they really are. That reptiles are not to be feared. That reptiles are not to be feared. Someone left this balcony door open. I go upstairs looking for our dog, Princess. Princess, where are you? When I find this monstrosity <gasps> lurking on the oh second God, floor. Look at this thing. Princess, where are you, honey bun? We're missing our dog. Princess! Princess, where are you? Thank you for watching the Reptile Channel. Please subscribe and don't forget to support us on Patreon. I'm Kevin McCurley and I own New England Reptile Distributors and uh, in this video we're going to basically address something that really bothers me and that happens to be the Reptile Channel. This is a channel that celebrates the pain and suffering of all sorts of animals. Melody loves helping out. If she sees a squirrel in trouble she naturally wants to get the squirrel and make sure it's okay. The squirrel would rather be somewhere else. Well. Things didn't go as planned. Naughty snake. It's all reptile keepers in a terrible light. It actually represents us as being these sadistic, uh, cruel keepers, and we're keeping these animals for the wrong reasons. And she's a man eater. These guys are man eaters. Thing. These guys are man eaters. And, and she's a man eater. Giant man eating snake. And I think largely, a lot of people that actually keep reptiles, we don't keep them for any of this kind of stuff. We don't want to sit there and torture other animals or anything like that. But this paints us in a very sad light. I think it's very important that we take a look at some of the information that we're going to provide. This is only a snippet. A lot of the really hardcore stuff that used to be out there that's really horrific, that really bothered me years ago, has basically been taken down because literally it was uh, this guy's Achilles heel. The reptile Channel is owned by this guy named Jonah Vore. I'm going to show you why the two are linked. Now, why is it important that they're linked? Joan of War did some sick stuff on YouTube that got him banned, okay? He has some really bad content, gross content, and what he had to do was he had to delete that, well, he had to get banned, <laughs> and then he had to start his YouTube channel all over again. And he started the Reptile Channel. And the Reptile Channel did not start all squeaky clean like it is now. And it's trying to act like it's teaching people something, but it has a deep underlying message. And what that is, is it's fulfilling a lot of people's vor fetish. What's a vor fetish? People like the idea of being swallowed alive, or watching other people getting swallowed alive, or other animals being swallowed alive. It's a thing people have. I don't have it. It's kind of disturbing, but I'm not going to judge. That's the thing. But when you bring it into reality, and you have other real life creatures swallowing other real life creatures for no reason, it's senseless violence. That's that's where I draw the line, and that's where Kevin draws the line. Anyways. I hope I can make this all fit. I hope I can convince you guys that this the Reptile Channel has alternative motives. Okay, everybody, so we're on the Big Gulp message board, and we're at May 2017. This is an old version of this website. Raven swallows rats, okay? We got that. We got new YouTube channel of real life feedings, hosted by the Reptile Channel. Let's look at that one, okay. Here's a post, basically saying that he's um, reposted some of his stuff from his previous channel, Smiley Face, and he links his uh, the Reptile channel. Okay, this is their uh, their page at 192 subscribers. I want you guys to look at the thumbnails, read the titles. The, th the thumbnails are deleted because the videos had to be deleted because if he linked the two together, he'd be banned again. Okay, Carpet Python eats chicks alive. Some blood on the snout. Not for the squeamish. Rats eaten alive. Raven attacks. What is this? Okay. Let's uh 
Look at this raven post. Okay, now, one thing that you will notice, the ravens are not in a lot of his new videos. Uh, here's a clip, though, of uh, one of the ravens in their new videos. Um, it's not featured eating things alive like it used to, but it's still in the videos. All these videos on the left were deleted. Okay, so right here, we're at uh, March 2017. We're gonna go up one month, look at May. We're in 2017 right now. And there's a reptile channel post right there. Okay, good. So his posts are still on in 2017. Let's look at June 2017. They're all deleted. That's a little strange, don't you think? They're not there anymore. He deleted them for some reason. Why is that? Funny thing happened around this time. He started getting reported. He started having articles written about his channel, and he had to clean up his act. If you don't believe me, you guys can go on Google, type in the Reptile Channel, find a little bit more evidence, a little bit more things. That's his original logo right there. Uh, that's 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 what happened in that time period. I got a bunch of baby rabbits the other day. They were so cute. Any guesses of what happened to them? Don't worry, I got it on video. One of the large monitors swallowed four of the baby rabbits alive, one after another. I heard them crying as one passed into the monitor's stomach. Take that, you damn rabbits. There's a few things in my life that warms my heart as much as seeing an outline of a helpless form moving inside a well-fed predator's belly. One video that really bothered me that I saw several years ago on the Reptile channel was a mother rabbit nursing baby rabbits. So we had literally a mother in the most vulnerable time of her life. She's nursing a, a litter of baby bunnies. And uh, in this video, they basically said, uh oh, here comes the monitor looking for food or whatever. And basically we have this monitor come to the situation where this mother rabbit is literally nursing its rabbits and the monitor starts eating the mother's rabbits. And so it eats all the little ones up and it was really horrific and it really upset me. Then the monitor, and this is a, a big Varanus Salvatore, so this is a Malaysian water monitor. Then the water monitor eats the mother rabbit. And I was so upset by this because it made us look unbelievable. And I, I'm a monitor guy. So it's take, I never feed my monitors anything like that. I don't feed them live. I don't do any of that stuff. It is, uh, it easily looked heartless. Reptile channel. Okay, so we have a live tally of how many things he's fed alive to his snakes. We have, oh, and monitors. Uh, we have 15 canines, 224 chicks, one feline, 15 rabbits, 512 rodents, 15 pigs, one wild lizard. The grand total of 783 lives converted into cold blooded reptilian flesh. Uh, look at this. This guy, Joan Vore, likes to feed wild animals he catches in his yard to his creatures, too. Coincidence? I think not. Okay, this next part is very important, okay? Pictures of Brutus. I'm gonna be showing you guys enclosures from the original Vore, Jonah Vore, and the Reptile Channel. The Reptile Channel's enclosures are a little bit more updated, but this is the same custom-built enclosure. I'm gonna show you why later, but look at them right now, do you not see the similarities, okay? And it's, this is definitely evidence too. Look at these stairs. These are definitely the same stairs. They angle the same way. They've got the same little uh, fixes made on them too. I know there's plywood on the left, but this is an updated version on the right. Coincidence or not, these are the same people. Okay, so you might be wondering, why am I showing you more of this pig stuff? Well, Jonavore likes feeding his animals pigs, so does the Reptile Channel. And right there he says, pig, the other white meat. Which makes me think he's trying to use these pigs, um as a prop to look like humans, or babies, I don't know, they look like babies to me, it looks disturbing when you think about it like that. Okay, so, there's just one tie, um, there's also some other pictures of the enclosure I want you guys to see here. Okay, check out the enclosures again, just look at them again, the latches are very similar, aren't they? Okay, so some of you guys might be like, maybe it's just the enclosure is similar, maybe he bought it somewhere and this guy happens to own it too. No, this is a custom built job. He even posted photos online of how he built it in great detail that I found on this message board. Here's a picture of the door. Here's the door. It's the same door. Everything's custom made. This guy is a carpenter. You can even see on his new, uh, on the Reptile channel, he has all of his carpentry videos. This guy is the same guy. Okay. So, I looked into his Patreon, which is deleted now, for some reason, probably because it has disturbing stuff on it, but 
Tasted Like Chicken is a supporter of this Patreon. It's in all the end of these videos, as I have highlighted here. Now, I looked into this guy. He is very much still on the internet. He was actually on this message board, okay? Some old posts. He's, he was pretty active on there, too. So let's go to this message right here. Uh, searching for something special. I'm gonna let you read this disturbing post on your own time, so you can pause the video if you want. But let's go to his uh, deviant art page, which should definitely be normal, correct? So that's still active. You can go check it out right now. It's still on the internet. Let's check out these mature content images. Oh, that's cool. That's a dog getting eaten by a snake. What else you got? That can only be the one. Oh, look at that. Another dog getting eaten by a snake. And another dog. And another dog. <laughs> I see a trend. So, why do you think these people support his Patreon? Why do you think these people watch his videos? Well, there's one of his fans right there. This was part of a study on snake feeding behavior, the relationships between snakes and their prey. It's believed large snakes are no different than large lizards in that they will consume any small-sized prey available. Just because a large constrictor can feed on an antelope doesn't mean they'll refuse prey the size of chicks or baby rodents. Oh, slow mode for all you educators out there. This is literally everything I hate. What do you think about this video? Is this an educational video? Uh, it's educational in the fact we're going to talk about predators' relationship with their prey and that the snake being opportunistic, it will eat many of these small prey items versus spending its energy just to eat, you know, basically capture and eat one large prey item. This is, this is literally people that are into cruelty. This is all about watching a predator eat hapless victims, and this is a huge objection that I have. I absolutely despise this channel. And the fact their little education points are absolutely, you might as well do it in crayons. They're doing this so they basically can remain on YouTube. They are disguising what their objective is. But their objective is to sit here and basically satisfy the fetishes of uh, Vore. It's Vore, it's a Vore fetish. Okay, it's, 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 okay. I, I don't really know a lot I know. about this, but this I do. <laughs> sadistic. This is sadistic pleasure. Okay. So this was part of a study on snake feeding behavior. A the study? relationships between snakes and their prey. A study. All right, so I'm just going to let this <laughs> anaconda go into my chicken coop and just let it eat anything. That oh, is all the chicks. Science. In that they will consume Jesus. any small-sized prey available. Well, yeah, no way. They're opportunistic just feeders. They're going to eat anything that they can. She That's does just say a that. known fact. A large constrictor can feed on an antelope doesn't mean they'll refuse prey the size of chicks or baby rodents. Obviously. It's food, they're not gonna refuse it. There's no need to have it go into a chicken coop. It's just like showing off that anacondas are these like horrible creatures that are trying to go into your livestock and try to kill your livestock and it's just trying to paint them in a horrible light. And man eater. Man eaters. Man eaters. And the man eater. Giant man eating snake. Just, it's unfortunate. Don't we feed our anaconda small stuff because we can't bring like huge we prey can't in here? Feed a antelope as they are. <laughs> we can't get antelopes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much anybody in the profession could tell you that. So you think maybe they're covering their ass trying to, so they don't get demonetized or? Potentially, I mean, <laughs> we don't always feed snakes large meals. If we're trying to grow a snake up to size for breeding, we consistently feed it much smaller meals. The University of Guadalajara, it's kind of senseless for them to have a study on this. To when there's I plenty of information. Think so, yeah. Okay. I think that's something you could have concluded just from talking to various biologists and researchers okay. and just people who work with the general hobbyists. I mean, I have respect for the food chain and that animals need to eat. Yep. But, on this scale, putting a anaconda in a dog pen and having all these baby chicks, it's just unnecessary. You don't think we're teaching anybody? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if it were a study, it would be set up a lot different. University of Guadalajara under the Division of Biological and Environmental Science. This was in 2008. All right, let's, let's, let's back this up. Okay, so here we have basically a Burmese python that's eating a pig. I think they're kind of trying to make the pig look maybe like an infant child. So it's gonna maybe appeal more to people that have this vor gulping kind of fetish stuff. Another thing they're doing, which is really disturbing to me, is the noises. This is like, they are putting these gurgling, weird, yummy, uh, 
gulping type noises. So I think this is literally appealing to those people that about all these weird noises and stuff. So please listen to that video. But more importantly, uh, the the college that is basically involved in this supposed study, I, I absolutely have to believe that that's a complete lie. So if anybody speaks Spanish, I would love to try to contact this college, College of Guadalajara, and uh, basically ask them about what we what was the study on. So we have a Burmese python eating a dead pig. I don't understand the point of that. There's there's nothing there's nothing to even study about that. Uh, there's yeah. nothing. There's nothing you're gonna get. There's nothing new. There's not. There's there's nothing to it. But basically, what they did is they had to validate it. They gave it like April 4th, and they gave it a date, 2008 or whatever. They did that. Like they're basically some kind of professionalism. Like there's some point. Like they're doing some kind of research. This is all self-validation to basically disguise what it is. Here's my theory. The University of Guadalajara has no idea that they're being referenced in any of these videos. At least five videos, they've their names being dropped, and they're in all of the live feeding videos. Any video that really could get them banned on YouTube or get them a community strike, these are the videos that they use the reference of the University of Guadalajara. They always say that they're in studies. There's just being a study being conducted. Well, we're almost positive that there's no college that would get involved with a study on something that's so basic that most biologists can just tell you right off the, right off the cuff. So, we fabricated a email already in Spanish that you guys could send to the University of Guadalajara that basically says, hey, do you know that you are being referenced in a bunch of these videos on the Reptile Channel's uh, YouTube channel? Maybe you guys should check it out. We referenced them in four videos, I add links, and all you gotta do is go to the link in the description, copy and paste that in there, and just let them know. What do you guys think? Help us out. Let's prove this, uh, this is all fake. King of the Amazon. Trisa. Okay, so see right there? So basically, this is working very well for them, but actually, the reality is we have a green anaconda. This is a very large female green anaconda, so. Uh, kudos to whoever raised this animal to this, this size, but the animal has a respiratory infection So I'm noticing we have saliva in here and the animal basically keeps opening its mouth There's a lot of spittle in there. The color of its gums is wrong uh, and some other shots And there's something called petechia the blood vessels dilate so much that actually some of them They they burst they rupture and you get these little bits of uh, hemorrhaging this animal repeatedly as I'm looking at this video keeps on adjusting its mouth opening its mouth it's basically struggling to breathe you're looking at a, a sick animal that basically in this case plays perfectly into this ferocious scary thing where in this case it's this woman's just playing with it and all of a sudden the animal is like wrapping her up and she's panicking we're creating all the drama and the animal keeps on opening its mouth I have lots of green anacondas. I breed green anacondas. My green anacondas don't open their mouths like that. They're, they don't go around like doing any of that. And if they started doing that, I go, oh, my anaconda's sick. So uh, you need to correct that situation. But this is not normal behavior. You think if these people are educators and educating the general public about reptile care that they would catch this? I think they like to keep these big predators because of what the predators do, but I don't really think they have a lot of uh, concern or, or, you know, empathy or value for, for these animals. That, all right, so look right there. That's all, this is all phlegm that's filling up and her esophagus back there. And that's a big thing, her tongue, when it's not flipping out like that, that's clear sign of respiratory infection because it can't flip that tongue out in order to see that. Yeah. It keeps doing that through the whole video. So that's a bad sign? Yes. It's, so just, it's not just like cool because it's opening its mouth, it's not yeah. saying hello? Right there. It's trying to breathe. It's <laughs> say hi. What? <laughs> Dude. Okay, so yeah. Hot smile for the camp. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's definitely straining excessively. To breathe? Yeah. It does this throughout the whole video. Every video it's in, it's always opening its mouth up and a lot and it just of just has like poor scale quality. But it just overall doesn't look healthy. Oh, I can hear it breathing. So hearing it breathing is bad? Yeah, yeah, it's not a good, not a good thing. It's not smiling? No, that is not, no. Oh, what's it doing there? Yeah, no, that's not, no. That, but they're experts. Not, no, okay, yeah, all right, no. It's opening its mouth because it's having trouble uh, getting air. Okay, so they don't Build normally up. just do Mucus. that? No. 
So they're just not trying to smile for the thumbnail or something like that? It's not. Okay. Yeah, it's tilting its head up like that. Why is it doing that? It's just struggling to breathe. That's sad. Put the camera down. Put the camera down. She's squeezing me. I'm serious. Get her out. Get her out. Squeeze on my neck. Get her out. Get her out. I'm red. Get her off. Get her off. Get her off. She's squeezing me. Now. What? Totally scripted, dramatic. But now we're gonna add the drama. But they, but they say in their intro that reptiles shouldn't be feared. And the Reptile Channel strives to show people that reptiles are not to be feared, but to show you how remarkable they really are. Fun fact, lizards are found everywhere except Antarctica. That's a good one. Wow! Fact. Boy, isn't it wonderful we have YouTube so we can learn fun facts like that. That's nonsense. What this is basically disguising the fact that we have this big black throat in somebody's closet where they took and fabricated a nest situation of rats. Well, actually what the rats are, there's, a, there's Dumbo rats in there, there's hooded rats in there. These are purely domesticated rats that are in a shoe, but they're hapless little rat pups. And what they did is they used a large lizard that is going to swallow them whole and while they're alive. And once again, back to your vor thing. This is literally fetish videos. It makes reptile keepers look sadistic, look terrible, and this is absolutely, uh, makes people go crazy, including myself, because it's really bad and it's projecting our community terribly. Are you learning anything yet? No, I do not understand why they would use live animals in this. Monitors are essentially nature's trash cans. They'll eat whatever they come across, no matter how rotten or disgusting. And there's plenty of negative effects to feeding as well, as far as behavior goes. So I'm sure if you watch some of Kevin's other videos, um, we can talk about all the cons about feeding live. What's, what's the worst thing to happen if? Ah, then I'm going after you. Monitor lizards are found on every continent except for Antarctica. I learned that from the Reptile Channel. Kevin, they like to include this at the end of every video. They have it up from like two to five seconds. It's a uh, 10 tips to reptile care. These are really, really trivial. These are not reptile care facts that involve even the minimal level of expertise. These are so standard. You wrote a couple this, books, right? I feel like you know what you're talking about here. You think this is this a little is, unnecessary? This is, this is, this is <laughs> terrible. This is like so cheesy. Okay. This was conducted with the University of Guadalajara under the Division of Biological and Environmental Science. This is one of three divisions at the school. Aw, poor squirrel. Oh no, it seems the squirrel passed out. Melody's giving the squirrel mouth to mouth resuscitation. The narrator really makes us creep. There's nothing Melody educational. She's actually making fun of it. They're so They dispatched it while it was here. And in scientific parlance, squeeze the bejeebus out of them. Very scientific, very educational. They caught a wild squirrel. Why would you do that? Wild animals, whether herbivorous or carnivorous, oftentimes are loaded with parasites. Tapeworms are very, very common. Um, and what happens is when a predator ingests that other animal, those tapeworms do not get digested. They actually just spread into the um, intestinal tract of the animal, and that'll get transferred to you, in this case, carpet python. Generally, wild animals are a lot nastier. Any animal that's fed alive is going to be fighting for its life when the snake tries to eat it. Well, so that's a wild feeder squirrel, they called it in the title. Right. What do you think about wild animals being fed your animals? No, that's Why? bad because, of course, snakes are usually around these squirrels in this area that they're in. So, I mean, there's all kinds of parasites they can get that they're not accustomed to. All right. It's just not good. Okay. These are educators. Yeah. So I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know. <laughs> Some things I want to note is the reptile channel is very easy to find on YouTube. So if you're someone who knows nothing about reptiles or if you're just getting involved in reptiles and you want to go to YouTube where there's a plethora of good information there. There's so many good YouTube uh, channels regarding reptile care, information, education, and you easily could follow you know, across the reptile channel thinking that this is once again an educational channel it has a very nice name, The Reptile Channel, and then they simply, uh, their guise is education. And it's really, it's basically, you know, this is a fetish, war type, sick, sadistic type uh, channel that's being disguised as something educational. I personally object clearly to what they're 
their content is, uh, to what's actually happening. Uh, the, the points are so anecdotal and so nonsensical to reptile education, but you know, to YouTube, basically, they don't have any idea, is this education, is this not education, but any of us reptile keepers, we know that this clearly is not education. So it's very important that we are not associated with the reptile channel because clearly they glorify the killing of hapless animals. So one important note is uh, when the videos are being narrated, I'm hearing a woman's voice and sometimes when I see somebody in the video, it's a woman. So what's kind of interesting about that is we're basically, this is uh, making this so it's non-threatening, so it really has some validity to it because they're trying to be very uh, educational and presenting themselves in a non-threatening fashion kind of interesting so we have a woman narrating it she's talking about it it looks uh, maybe family family friendly but uh, how come often I'm seeing hands of a man so it's not actually the woman that's actually doing these things so you see a man building cages you see man or men uh, managing these animals so it's kind of interesting so it's almost like there's somebody in the background that's trying to hide uh, so that's kind of interesting in itself uh, if you engage in any kind of live feed videos I strongly um, plead to you please do not do this we do not want the general public to see live feed videos glorification of the suffering of other animals we all know some of the, the facts about reptiles but I personally like rodents and I love animals and I have great empathy for animals and um, if you appear heartless, which is, is very troubling to people that don't keep reptiles. So if you're doing something, you're feeding a rat, a mouse, and stuff like that, and especially if you're doing anything where your behavior shows that you're, you're getting some kind of sick fascination and enjoyment out of it, you portray the entire reptile hobby industry as one of these weirdos or these sadistic people that want to keep these gnarly predators and eating these little helpless animals, your audience, you're going to get really horrific content as far as the, the comments. And I've witnessed this on the Reptile channel. Historically, over the years, there's so many comments about people just lavishing the idea. Like, I could hear it screaming and all this. We're keeping these animals as pets and we're losing our rights and we're basically being maligned by animal rights. So they're always going to use these live feed videos or any of our poor commentary or people, you know, fascinated with these kind of things. Um, there is no argument we can have to somebody that doesn't like reptiles or somebody that doesn't keep reptiles that would ever make it seem reasonable that we have these animals just mauling baby chicks because let's face it a lot of us really like baby chicks myself included they're very cute baby ducklings all these different things i love them they're cute they're wonderful and it is definitely something that's going to create a lot of outrage and empathy from people so people that are not reptile people and they're witnessing that that can create a huge amount of energy and outrage that could be used against us. If you want to sit here and go, well, it's natural or it's this, it's that. We know these things are happening. Why do we have to show it? We have to spotlight. We have to engage in it. We have to put ourselves vulnerable for this kind of commentary. I think it's very important to hear your point of view and many of you people could easily go out there and do some research and you could help us, help us further expose things. But uh, one thing that's very interesting to me, within four or five instances, they cited the University of Guadalajara and basically said that it was part of a study. Uh, if you look in the, the details and the description of this video, there is a document, it's in Spanish, and uh, we've con converted it. But if you could look at this and anybody could could further investigate for us or for all of us, I would love to actually know and expose them for this uh, basically make-believe study. It's, it's clearly it's anecdotal at best and I think basically what they did is they just they used the uh, the name uh, University of Guadalajara as uh, some way to get street cred or basically to validate what they're doing. This is for fetish. This is literally enjoying sadistic pleasures of taking harmless, hapless animals and let them be eaten alive in most cases by large predators. And there's something about, you know, this, this whole 
fetish. I don't know, I don't understand it. I'm aware of it. I still will never ever understand this kind of thing. But there are people that really enjoy these things just like these horrific crush videos, which are unbelievable. But this is like something like that. It has definitely parallels and there's nothing good in it. There is no education. This channel is literal garbage. There is nothing education. There are wonderful reptile keepers in this this industry YouTube they're all over there you can get tons of great information far more quality far better presentation where we're not embarrassed it makes us look intelligent and I really appreciate all the people on YouTube that are doing these videos because anything we can do to gear ourselves together and collect ourselves as a hobby and look intelligent thoughtful and unite so we can basically balance things and we can actually uh, present a good front or good face to certainly uh, work in parallel in conjunction with US ARC because US ARC is what fights for us and I'm part of that and you all need to be part of US ARC but we need to do things that support US ARC. We are all connected or actions of one person are going to speak volumes of our industry whereas all the educators and all the people that are being thoughtful and giving good information it takes a lot of them and it's a very slow process to actually prove to the general public that hey we actually do have value and maybe we are intelligent and there's some quality to what we do be sure to comment like subscribe hit the notification also please share this video help spread the word join our discord because there's some real good uh, quality type people in there that have really helped us they've done some work for us and they these guys are really resourceful and uh, we appreciate their help and more people in there the better so let's get the conversation moving let's get this exposed and let's let's put some pressure on YouTube and actually see if we can actually do something that's uh, good for all of us